Ladies and germs, children of all ages, or people that claim to be children for tax reasons, welcome to the XFM Labs and high atop the road case of never-ending projects and broken dreams. <laughs> we have a selection of AM stereo equipment to look at and talk about today. Uh, what I'd like to do is kind of start the process of putting together a multi-part video series on how we design an HF broadcast exciter. And why would you want to do something like that? Well, if you've got a mono transmitter and you decided that stereo is better, because, of course, two channels, more than one, it's got to be better, right? Anyway, it's, um, it's something that uh, we've been kind of fooling around since 2012. The old transmitter we had was, uh, of course, stereophonic, but when we entered the world of modern amplifier technology, and better efficiency, we had to kind of leave that by the side of the road. So the goal before us now is to try and bring that transmitter into the stereophonic age. So what you're looking at here is a commercial AM stereo exciter from Delta Electronics. This one goes back to, I think, about 1991. We've had a crack at trying to modify it for HF use and just haven't had a whole lot of luck. I think part of that is due to the fact that the parts in this thing were not fast enough to run at frequencies above two megahertz. It's just the way it is, so we have to build our own. To the right of that, the little blue board is a uh, AM stereo transmitter that you can find on eBay from Greece, and actually it works pretty well. We'll be talking about that in a later video at some point. But one of the things that uh, we need to talk about is how do you go about designing something like this? Well, first things first, you need to have a list of goals, and so that's where we're going to start with the obvious stuff. So we need something that can do 100 kilohertz to 30 megahertz without component changes. Frequency discipline is nice, so we can chain it to something like GPS or a rubidium source, or if you're really wealthy, a cesium beam fountain. Why not? Uh, remote control is obviously a requirement, and also we want it to be 1U in size, the same size as this piece of equipment. Low power, because it's going to have to run off battery power, 48 volts nominal. And uh, down the road, a monitoring receiver so we can check on channel conditions and also monitor the output of the transmitter for in-ear feedback. IFB is what they call that in the industry. And also somehow to integrate the fiber and SPDIF audio codec into this so that uh, all the remote control stuff and audio happens in one place. The other thing too is since our new audio processor accepts SPDIF audio only, we need to figure out how to feed it and then get the audio back into the exciter. So that's another set of hoops to jump through. And uh, maybe down the road, a sample transmitter might be kind of a nice thing too. So one of the problems that we've got with the existing, with, we had with the existing transmitter was the efficiency is very low. It's a linear amplified transmitter, of course, where we take an HF or a medium wave signal generator and heterodyne it up to the frequency we need and then amplify it a whole crap ton of times and that requires a lot of electrical power and generates a lot of heat which of course since we're aiming for battery power that's totally impractical uh, the new transmitter of course is high level modulated with current mode class d so we have better efficiency but it brings with it its own set of challenges and one of those is that to compensate for the group delay and other forms of distortion in the transmitter you need to compensate for that in the exciter so you could use an existing broadcast band exciter, but the problem is most of these were never designed to go beyond two megahertz and they chose the parts accordingly. Also, these designs are pushing 25 to 30 years old, so some of the parts you can't get anymore. So what we've done is we've kind of gone through the, the rudimentary breakdown of how we think this should work, and this is kind of the idea I came up with. Like a standard CQAM transmitter, you've got your two balance modulators, which are fed by your in-phase and quadrature phase carrier signals, and also their corresponding I and Q modulating signals. I, of course, is left plus right. Q is left minus right. Those are summed, amplified, and filtered, and then it's amplified some more. The whole purpose of this circuit is just to look at the zero crossings of the QAM waveform and figure out what's high and what's low and just chop off all the rest of it. So what comes out the back end is a nice clean phase modulated carrier that we can feed our broadcast transmitter. This is going to be the first part of the circuit that we're going to try and build. And uh, there's kind of a lot of stuff that's kind of waiting in the wings and untested. So we're going to find out whether this works or not. And if not, we'll have to modify it so it does work. So like I said, this will be the first part in a multi-part video series on designing and building 
an HF wideband CQAM exciter.